We present The Toff on the Farm, a radio serial in six parts, dramatised by Roy Lomax, from the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Part 5. A Step in the Dark. How long will it take to get there, Jolly? About 15 minutes, sir, at this pace. Well, I don't drive any faster. No, sir. I must say, Miss Bridger certainly sounded very frightened on the phone. Sounded, sir? Do you doubt her fear is genuine? I'm not sure, Jolly. But did she give any indication as to why she was afraid? Well, apparently, two men have been watching her flat. They've been asking questions about her. No more than that, sir? Not really. But you'll remember when we caught her after that shooting incident, she was... Uh, well, she was very worried about what might happen if she talked too much. Uh, but she knew very little of importance. Mm, she could identify the man who fired at us. That's true, sir. But I'm inclined to think we should treat this visit with some caution, don't you agree? I do indeed, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Jolly? Would I be right to assume that you are approaching this case with rather more caution than usual? Well, how do you mean? Well, sir, if I may say, your style is generally one of panache. You prefer to attack, eh, Jolly? Uh, forgive me, sir. I meant no... Oh, no, 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 Jolly. No, no, you're right, of course. But but if I am to attack, I need a target, don't I? And this is all so nebulous, like chasing shadows. Very frustrating for you, sir. Yes, it is, Jolly. But... It only requires one small clue, a sudden inspiration, and you will respond as always. You think so? I have no doubt whatsoever. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence, though I'm not sure I deserve it. Why ever not, sir? Well, take Red Brandt, for instance. Now, I had some doubts about him right from the start, yet I still invited him to the flat. Would I normally have done that? Yes, sir. I believe you would. And left you alone with him? Yes, sir. Yeah, but he's a dangerous man, a killer, according to Bill Grice, and... And I put you at considerable risk, Johnny. Not at all, sir. You had voiced your reservations about Mr. Brandt, and there was never a moment when I was not totally on my guard. Anyway, I'm sorry, Johnny. Think nothing of it, sir. And if I may say, with all due respect to Superintendent Grice, I am not convinced that Mr. Brandt represents a real threat. Any reason in particular? No, sir. Though you must have felt that he deserved the benefit of your doubt. Yes, I suppose so. <sighs> then that is good enough for me. So you still have confidence in my judgment? Of course, sir. Jolly, I'm feeling better every minute, thanks to you. <laughs> I'm delighted to hear it, sir. Well, how are we going? We should arrive at Kendall Street in a few minutes, sir. Good. Better not to park right outside the house. No, sir. Which one is it, Johnny? Over there, sir. Number 37, opposite the tobacconist. Ah, yes. Well, Jolly, are we... Walking into a trap, do you think? Difficult to say. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's eyes open and be prepared, eh? Yes, sir. Come on, then. Let's go and visit Miss Lola Bridger. Hardly what one would call a salubrious neighbourhood, sir. Oh, no, not really. It's a, it's a basement flat, you say? Yes, sir. Well, at least that means we can go down without disturbing the rest of the house. Uh, this is it, sir. Oh, just a minute, Jolly. Sir? No lights in the flat. No, sir. Look, um, let me go down first, just in case. Very well. Now, then, let's see. Oh, damn, get away. All right, sir? Yeah, seems to be. Come on down. Oh, so far, so good. Shall I ring the doorbell, sir? Yes, you'd better... Now, hold on. What is it? Silly girl, I told her to close all the windows. Sir? Well, look at this. It's wide open. Still, it says ringing the bell. Look, sir. Here, the glass has been smashed. Well, let me see. Hmm. Hand in there. Could just release the window catch. You think it's been open from outside? It could be, Jolly. Look, I'm going in. Now, do be careful, sir. Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's it. Good. I'll open the door for you. Thank you, sir. Come in, Jolly. Thank you. If you'll close the curtains, Jolly. Yes, sir. And now we can have some light on the subject. That's better. Yes. Well, it's rather nice, don't you think? Yes, sir. But where's the lady? Inexpensive, but quite good taste for... What is it, sir? Here. Behind the sofa. Oh, sir. Yes, I'm afraid so, Jolly. She's dead. That's dreadful. Just like Fenner and Hampton, another knife. Again. Careful, sir. It's all right. I'm not going to touch the body. How long ago, do you think? The time it took us to drive here. Can't have been more than 30 minutes. Yes, sir. 
Ah, you see, Jolly, it's happened again. Just too late. One step behind. Please sit down, sir. You're looking very tired. I've just about had it. I really have. Now, don't say that. Well, what can I do next, Jolly? Tell me that. The only thing I do know is that whoever is behind all this, they're leaving no loose end. Which is no help to you. That's what I mean, Jolly. I, I haven't really left square one. Well, sir... Well, what? Have you fully considered square one? The start of this whole affair? The sale of Selby Farm? Oh, go on, Johnny. Well, so it's all the dreadful things that have happened. But they started there, did they not? But I need hardly tell you that. Uh, hold on a minute. Sir? Yeah. Thank you very much, Johnny. I don't understand, You're sir. You're brilliant. I've always known it. But what have I said? Yeah, so many unknowns, but yet that's the answer, right to the heart of the matter. It won't be easy. No, sir. We'll need help, um... Bert Ebert, I think. Oh, I'm sure he'd be only too happy. Right, Johnny. You wanted us to attack? That's what we're going to do. Now, let's see. Where's the phone? Sir? Ah, yes. Good. I'll, uh, I'll get on to Bert right away, and then we'd better call the police. Yes, sir. Well, well, well. And who have we here? Oh, hello, Bill. <laughs> Caught me in the act, eh? What? I was just ringing you, and here you are, right on cue. Where you do? Of course. Uh, hello, Mr. Grice. Mr. Jolly, this the young lady? Ah, so you know. You'd be surprised what I know, Rollison. I'm sure. Okay, Sergeant, have a look over the flat. And don't touch anything. I won't, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Bill. You'll find some of our prints, I'm afraid. Well, the boys will love you for that. Well, I suppose you want to know all about it? No, I'd like to hear it from Mr. Jolly. Uh, sir? No, it's all right, Jolly. Go ahead. Well, we found A here. Just like this, Mr. Grice. Uh, let's have a look. Ah, well... And what sort of a story are you going to give me this time, Rollison? Oh, really, Billy, not very convincing. We all know you've been tipped off. You knew what to expect when you came here. You think so? Well, of course you did. Look, it's the second time this has happened to me today. It's becoming a habit. Not a very nice one. That is rather unfortunate. That's one way to describe it. You know what I mean, Billy. It, it's someone's idea of a game, and a very nasty game. Very well, Rollison. We did get a tip off. I admit it. That's why we're here. What's your reason? Well, this poor girl telephoned me an hour or so ago, asked me to come over. Did she tell you why? Well, she sounded frightened, and, well, that's why I'm here. But what's the connection with you? How did she know to ring you? Got my number from somewhere, I suppose. <laughs> You'll be telling me next year in yellow pages. Ah, come on, Bill. Anything to do with what we were talking about earlier? You know what I mean. I don't know. I wish I could believe you. Look, I'm as much in the dark about this as you are, and that is the truth. Well, I suppose I'll have to settle for that just now. Oh, by the way, any news of Brandt? No, I put out an EPB, but no luck so far. Well, let's hope you find him soon. Now, uh, is there any reason why Jolly and I shouldn't be? Well, I'm trying hard to think of one, but I can't. Anyway, I know where to find you. Yes, Sergeant? Nothing much at first, Sergeant. Looks like she was uh, on the game. Was she? Well, I'll we'll get down to some real work when the amateurs are out of the way. Oh, charming. Well, far be it from me to interfere with the police in the execution of their duty. And that must be the joke of the year. Come on, Jolly, we're obviously not welcome. I'll be in touch, Bill. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, Mr. Jolly. Goodbye, Mr. Grice. Have you met him before, Sergeant? The, uh, Toff, you mean? Aye. Not in connection with the case, sir. He goes his own way, I'm afraid. Yes, I've heard, sir. Well, if he's involved in this one, he'd better watch his step, or he's likely to find himself in a lot of bother. Yes, sir. No, I suppose we'd better have another look around here and see what we can come up with. Now, thank goodness we didn't have to hang around there too long, Jolly. Trouble is, you never know with Bill. No, sir. But he arrived just when I was trying to ring Bert. If I may say, sir, you cope with that very neatly. No, thank you, Jolly. And, uh, sir? Yeah? It's good to see you back in your usual form. Well, I was never a very good defensive player, Jolly. No, sir. In fact, there's uh, only one problem at the moment, I think. And what's that? Bert Ebert's reaction when we wake him from his well-earned beauty sleep. Well, I don't know, Jolly. I'm surprised we haven't woken up the whole street. Mr. Ebert would seem to be a very sound sleeper, sir. The result of good, honest toil, Jolly, and a few pints of his best ale. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, sir. That sounds like someone. Yes, I think we've roused him at last. Now, what sort of time do you call this? Hello, sir? Bert. Long time no see. 
No electricity can't be. I'm afraid so, Bert. Mr. Law, well now. Sorry to drag you out of bed at this unearthly hour. <laughs> Don't give it a thought, Mr. Law. And uh, Mr. Jolly. Good morning, Mr. Ebbett. Well now, come on in the two of you. Oh, thanks, Bert. You know, the missus was only saying tonight, what's happened to the top, Bert? She said, we haven't seen him in a month or Sunday. Well, you know how it is, one thing and another. I do, Mr. Law. Anyway, it's great to see you. Keeping all right, though. Yes, you? quite well, thank you. And uh, you? Oh, Mr. Gobble, you know. When the pub keeps us busy. Yes, that's one thing I like about the sailor's arm. Yeah, what's that, Mr. Law? Never changes. Just the same as it was when we first came down here, eh, Johnny? Yes, indeed, sir. How long is it? Uh, 20 years? Oh, must be that easy. <laughs> yeah, and how's the gymnasium, Bert? Any likely champions coming along? Well, it's, it's funny you should say that, Mr. Law. There is one lad, light heavy, only 19. He's got a left hook like Henry Cooper. He's in the area finals, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's a natural, Mr. Law. Give him another year or two, a few more pounds. Yeah, he's a good boy. Well, it won't be your fault if he doesn't make it. Oh, he's got a chance, Mr. Law. But boxing's a funny game, you know. Anyway, uh, gentlemen, can I get you a drink? Uh, well, no, not just now, thanks, but, um... Look, I, I want to ask a favour, if I may. Any time, Mr. Law, you know that. Do you think you could lay your hands on a small van? Not too conspicuous, just for a few hours? Well, um... I don't know. Uh, when do you want it? As soon as possible, really. It's very short notice, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, uh, let's have a think. And we'll need a driver, sir. You uh, don't want it for yourself, then? Uh, no, we're going back to my flat for an hour or so. We'll arrange to meet up with the van later. Yeah, hold on a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Just what you want. It'll take a couple of hours, though. Oh, that's all right. And a driver, you see. Yes. That's no problem, Mr. Hop. Oh, uh, there is one thing you should know. What's that, then? I'm afraid this job isn't exactly Queensbury rules. Oh, uh, can you uh, tell me? Well, let's say it's saving someone from himself for his own good. Like uh, an errand of mercy. Mm, you could say that. Uh, Mr. Hop, I've known you a long time. You've done some funny things, but you've never done a bad one. I'll trust you. <laughs> what about the driver? He'll be all right, don't you worry. And if he had to... Uh... Well, knock somebody out. You've got a gold-plated guarantee, Mr. R. Well, if you can put me in touch with him, I'll give him his instructions. Just keep talking, Mr. R. I'm your driver, and I'm all ears, even if they do look like cauliflowers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jolly, I think we're more or less organised now. Not much more we can do until zero hour. No, sir. Time to put up our feet for an hour or two. A short rest would be most welcome. Yes, it's been a long day. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yes, Jolly? I realise that recent events have rather preoccupied us, but we do seem to have forgotten Miss Selby, sir. Oh, not really. But her sudden disappearance. I know where she is, Jolly. You do, sir? Uh, Mr. Morn rang her. She went over to his flat. You saw her there? Yes, yeah, should have told you, but... As you said, we've had other things on our mind. Indeed we have, sir. Uh, but do you not think we should inform Miss Selby of your intentions? Uh, no, Jolly. But they do concern Selby Farm. Jolly, would it surprise you to know that Miss Selby and Mr Morn have asked... Well, well, no, ordered me to drop the case? They what, sir? That's true. But it was Mr Morn who first asked you to help. Yeah, I know. But you see, Jolly, I met someone else at Mr Morn's flat. Yes, sir? Miss Selby's half-brother, Alan. But he's been kidnapped, sir. Didn't they demand the farm in exchange for his life? They did. And would you believe he told me the kidnappers had released him, on parole, as it were, to, to make sure Miss Selby let them have the farm. The kidnappers have seemed to be very foolish, or very confident. Well, it's a new one on me, certainly, Johnny. It's all very strange. It is indeed, sir. Um, incidentally, um, what was your impression of Mr Selby? Hardly had time to form one, really. Of course, according to Mr. Morn, he's rather a, a weak character, too dependent on his sister. But there again, Mr. Morn's biased. Yes. He was rather nervous, but that's understandable in the circumstances. Anyway, Miss Selby's decided to give in to the kidnappers. That's why she wants me out of it. Thought my involvement might prejudice the deal. But this little expedition you've just arranged, sir. That's the point, Johnny. It's why I can't tell Miss Selby. She mustn't know anything about it. I understand, sir. As far as she's concerned, I'm no longer involved. But I promise you, Jolly, I'm not going to stand by and see these villains get away with this sort of thing. Indeed, no, sir. But who are the villains? <laughs> That's a $64 question, isn't it? But you never know. We, uh, we may find the answer to that on our little expedition. <laughs> now, home, James, and uh, that short rest, eh? Hey? What is it? Oh, Gillian. Uh, what time is it? Nearly five o'clock. Here, I brought you some tea. Oh, thanks. Five o'clock? Yes. What's on earth? Something's wrong. No, 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 it's all right. Don't get up. No, how, how's Alan? He's asleep. I don't want to wake him. What's the matter? Can't you sleep? No, it's not that. 
Monty, I want to borrow your car. At <laughs> this time of the morning, I'll go back to bed, for goodness sake. I'm going back to the farm to see old Mr Smith. What the devil for? Oh, I must try and persuade him to move out of the farm. Oh, Gillian. Oh, I know he's an obstinate old man, but I feel responsible, Monty. I mean, now I've decided to let these people have the farm, we know what they're capable of. Mm. They won't just ask him to leave, will they? But it's their problem, Gillian. Now, remember what Richard said? These people will go to any lengths to get the farm. Now, I thought we'd finished with him. We have. But it's true, isn't it? What about the police? What do you mean? Well, they'll still be at the cottage, won't they? The murder, remember? Oh, well, I'll have to take a chance on that. Anyhow, it's a good way from the farm. They won't see me. But you can't be sure. Oh, well, I don't care. I'm going down to see Mr Smith. He's an old man. He may get hurt. I must do something. Well, if that's how you feel... Oh, it is. Then I'm coming with you. Well, you don't have to. Anyway, you should rest your leg. <laughs> My dear Gillian, you can't rest an artificial leg. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Well, you go and make some toast or something while I'm getting ready. Oh, all right. And remember, when we get down there, if old Smith tries to give any trouble, you just leave him to me. Oh, we made good time, Jolly. No sign of Bert Ebbett. As you say, sir, we're a little early. Well, it doesn't look as though Mr Smith's up and about. No, sir. I think if we're fairly quiet, we might wander around out here, see what we can see. Are you looking for anything in particular? Not really. It is all rather untidy, it's sir. It's a shambles, Johnny. So I suppose a lot of work for one man, and Mr Smith is getting on a bit. Hold on. What is it, sir? Well, look at these bottles. Rye, whiskey, bourbon... Good Lord, Catskill brandy. And these empty cigarette packets. Yes, I've seen those before. What, what do you make of it, Johnny? Mr Smith may have been entertaining American visitors. But he refuses to let anyone inside the farm. He may have been tempted, sir. A large financial inducement. Yeah, I suppose it's possible. It is intriguing, sir, this American involvement. It's a bit heavy, isn't it? I'm sure that's why Bill Grice is interested. He thinks it ties up with another case he's working on. Yes. Uh, sir... Now, what is it, Johnny? Well, sir, you are aware of Mr. Morn's American business interests? Well, I know he goes over there from time to time. He doesn't talk much about it, then. You don't think there could be some connection, given all the circumstances? Well, I really don't know, Jolly. I, I suppose we shouldn't ignore the fact. Uh, thanks for reminding me. Not at all, sir. Ah. Ah, I wonder if that's our friend Bert. It is, sir. A plus small van. Good. We'd better go and have a word with him. Hello, Mr. O. Here we are. Yes, promised right on time. As usual, Bert. <laughs> Look, the old chap isn't up yet. Well, I can easily give him a blast in the old Mr. O. Let him wake up an old cemetery. No, thanks, Bert. I want to treat him as gently as possible. Well, then, uh, what do you want me to do, Mr. O? Well, you see the back door over there? Yeah. If you can get up alongside the door, just behind the doorpost, he won't see you. OK. We'll try to get him outside. If and when we do, you grab him. Right, you are. Oh, and remember, Bert, we want to talk him into leaving of his own free will. But if not... Don't you worry, Mr. Earl. I'll treat him like the missus's best bone china. <laughs> I know you will. Right, Dolly. I'll let you knock on the door. Enough to awaken, but not to annoy. Very well, sir. Just about right, I'd say. All right, blast you. I can hear you. Do you think I'm deaf or something? Oh, dear. That was a good try, Jolly. Now, then, what's all this racket? Uh, good morning, Mr Smith. Who the hell are you? His name's Jolly, actually, Mr Smith. Here, I know you, don't I? Yes, we met yesterday. Isn't it a wonderful I morning? I told you to stay off my property. You most certainly did. There, I warned you, didn't if I? If I may say, Mr Smith, I'm sure Mr Rolleston would never... Well, the same goes for you. But you're in danger, Mr Smith. Oh, I am, am I? We'll soon see about that. Oh, Lord. Sorry, Bert. It's all right, Mr. Earl. We'll have to try again, Jolly. Oh, very good, sir. Now, what did I tell oh, you? Mr. Smith, be careful with that shotgun. I've had enough of you, too. Yeah, put your hands up, Jolly. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. That's better. Now, please, listen, Mr. Smith. Now, you listen, Mr. Nosy Parker. Now, you get off my property or else. I thought you'd be reasonable. Now, you back off. Or are you going to count to three? Look, three people were murdered That's yesterday. That's their hard luck. One. Uh, one of them was a woman. Shut up. Two. You could be the next. Three. Mr. Smith, you Come wouldn't... Oh, I warned you, didn't I? OK, Bert. You know, Monty, it isn't really necessary for you to come down to the farm with me. Gillian, for the last time, I'm not going to let you face Smith on your own. If he gets angry, there's no knowing what he might do. Oh, all right, if you must. Now, just give me a minute. I'll, uh, I'll leave a note for Alan, let him know where we are. 
Well, do you think you should? Why not? Those people who kidnapped Alan, they may find out where we are. We don't think Alan would tell them. Well, I don't know. What if they came here? We can't leave Alan without some sort of note. Oh, I suppose not. Yeah, well, look, I'll, uh, I'll put it on the bedside table. He'll see it when he wakes up. Oh, all right, Monty. How is he, Mr. Hart? Do you think he's hurt bad? Oh, I don't think so. What do you say, Jolly? It was a nasty bump on the head, sir, but I think it looks worse than it really is. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hart, I really oh. am, but if he hadn't tripped over the step just as oh, I went through... Oh, that's perfectly all right, Bert. It wasn't your fault. Oh, oh my head. Ah, he's coming round. He could very easily have ventilated the two of us, eh, Jolly? Indeed, sir. I only meant to scare you. He did that all right, Mr. Smith. He didn't mean to hurt no one. Oh, my head. Yes, I, I think we ought to get you to a doctor. No, I don't want no doctor poking me You're about. not a young man, Mr. Smith. Heads can be funny things, you know. Got to be careful about a crackling and that. Isn't that right, Mr. Arthur? Oh, indeed it is. Uh, yeah. You're trying to scare me. No, no, but I knew a fellow once. Got a bump on the head, uh, done nothing about it. What about him? Oh, don't bear talking about it. He lost everything. Had to leave his home. What do you say? Couldn't look after himself no more, could he? They had to bung him in an institution. Dead tragic it was. Deplorable. Yeah. It would be a pity, Mr. Smith. What do you mean? Well, if you were unable to stay on at the farm, just because you wouldn't see a doctor. I, I, I don't know. Well, it, it'd have to be someone what understands about heads. Of course, mate. That's only natural. In fact, I know just a man for you to see up in London, uh, Harley Street. And he really knows about it. Look, mate, what he don't know about banged up nuts ain't worth knowing. And I'm sure Mr. Ebert would be only too pleased to take you up to London to see him, wouldn't you, Mr. Ebert? That's right, Mr. Jolly. Yeah, and remember, Mr. Smith, the sooner you go, the sooner you'll be back here again. Well, all right, then. I'll go. A very wise decision, mate. Right, come on, let's be over here. Yeah, but I'm coming back, you know. I'll be back. See you later, Mr. Arnold. Oh, come on, old sport. Well, Jolly, we've finally made it. He will be all right, won't he? Mr. Smith is fairly indestructible, I should imagine, sir. So. Yeah, good. Well, now we can go through the farm with a fine tooth comb. See if we can discover why it's such a sought-after residence. Incidentally, sir. Yes, Johnny? I took the liberty of giving Mr. Ebert a key to the flat. It occurred to me that if there were any posts or messages, he might bring them back here with him. An excellent idea, Jolly. Now, let's go inside the farmhouse and uh, begin our search. Well, Sergeant? There's uh, still no answer, sir. But damn it, it's six o'clock. He ought to be home in bed. Oh, I wish we'd found that card of his when we had him at the flat. He must have known more about Miss Bridger than he let on. Aye, all that stuff he gave me about the girl ringing him out of the blue, and I fell for it. Can you imagine that, Sergeant, after all these years? But why wouldn't he tell us, sir? Oh, don't ask me, Sergeant, but that's the tough, always the same. The on is telling you everything, then you find he's keeping the best bits for himself. What do you think we should do? I don't know. But we want to get in touch with him. Well, he odds he's out on the loose somewhere making trouble for somebody. Well, he'd better not look to me to pull his fat out of the fire. Hey, Sergeant? No, sir. No, he'd better not. Uh, Sergeant? Yes, sir? Uh, will you try his number again? Just in case, you know. Uh, yes, sir. Good. No doubt about it, Jolly. The Victorians didn't believe in building lightweight furniture. No, sir. Well, that's about it up here, isn't it? I think we've gone over it pretty thoroughly. Oh, indeed we have, sir. I don't think I've ever seen so much dust. Mr. Smith isn't exactly house proud, is he? Well, come on, let's make a start downstairs. How about you, Jolly? I'm finding it hard work. If only we knew what we were looking for. It would help, wouldn't it? Anyway, you try that room, see what you can discover. Uh, excuse me, sir. Listen. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, we have company. Mr. Ebert, sir? To London and back? Oh, he couldn't do it in time. Just a minute. Can you see who it is? Now, careful. It's Miss Selby. And Mr. Morn with her. Anyone else? No, sir. Now, why would they be here? Well, I don't know, unless... Yes, that's what it is. She's come down to see Smith. Uh, now, keep down, Jolly. They mustn't see us. Do you think they'll go away, sir? Oh, not until they've spoken to him. But he's not here. What can we do? Now leave that to me, Jolly. You stay here. Are you going to let them in? Shh. Mr. Smith! Come on, now. We know you're in there. Ah, you go away. I don't want to see nobody. Oh, please open the door, Mr. Smith. I want to talk to you. I ain't got nothing to say to you. You may be in danger. I want to help you. Yeah, I don't need no help. Please, Mr. Smith, I beg 
You're wasting your time. And Gillian, leave it to me. Now, come on, Smith. Open this door. Yeah, you clear off as well, Mr. la I shall break the door down. Yeah, you do that and you'll get both barrels of the shotgun. Please, Monty. Mr. Smith, it's about my brother. He may be killed. I must talk to you. What? It's true, Mr. Smith. I wouldn't lie to you. Well, you come back tomorrow morning. I'll think about it. We can't wait until then. All right, then. You come here tonight, six o'clock. All right. We'll see you then. Come on, Monty. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Smith. Well done, sir. Most convincing. I hope so, Johnny. Anyway, it gives us a few hours, Grace, so uh, let's make a start on these rooms, shall we? Well, that's the last of the kitchen cupboard, sir. Nothing here, I'm afraid. But there has to be, Jolly. I'm sure of it. We we must have overlooked something. We've been most thorough, sir. Now, do you think if we search the outbuilding? No, Jolly, whatever we're looking for, it has to be somewhere in this farmhouse. Well, sir, short of pulling up these flagstones. Yeah, it'll oh. take a demolition squad, Jolly. Ah, that must be Bert Ebbett, sir. I wonder if he's brought Mr Smith back with him. It would mean the end of our searching. Well, our little trip has been rather a waste of effort, don't you think? Anyway, let him in, would you, Johnny? Yes, sir. Mr. Ah, oh, come on in, Bert. Oh, well, I called in at your flat and there was this envelope addressed to you, Mr. Jolly. Oh, thank you, Mr. Abbott. Well, Bert, what have you done with our Mr. Smith? He's over at my place, sleeping like a baby. He saw the doctor? <laughs> I'll say. He's all right, I hope. Oh, yeah, he's right as rain. In fact, I took him back to my pub for a brandy. He was so relieved there was no stopping him. Got through half the bottle before he passed out. Uh, you had any luck here, Mr. O? No, I'm afraid not, Bert. You've gone through the old house, have you? Every inch we've checked. Walls, floorboards, nothing. And these flagstones down here, and I was just saying to Jolly, they need a demolition squad. Yeah, I can see. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Jolly? This is the report we were waiting for, the check on Mr. Brandt. Now, what's it say? Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. Apparently, Mr. Brandt is very well known in criminal circles in the States. And in fact, the report confirms all that Mr. Grice told you about him. Well, no doubt, I suppose. Not at all, sir, according to this. Hey, Mr. Ock, come over here a minute. Now, what is it, Ben? Have a look at this. Yes? Yeah? Well, can't you see something different about this flagstone? <laughs> Not really, no. Well, I'll tell you, this flagstone's been taken up and turned about face before it was put back. How do you know? Oh, excuse me, Mr. R. Mr. Jolly, there's a big iron shovel by the stove, if you wouldn't mind. Certainly, Mr. Abbott. Yeah. You see, Mr. R., I used to work at mending pavements when I was a lad. You don't forget what you learned, but it's not easy to spot if you don't know. Here you are, Mr. Abbott. Ah, thanks. You will uh, want it up, Mr. R. Yes, I do, Bert. Right, then. Let's have a go. See if I'm as good as I used to be. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Law. Thanks, Bert. Uh Uh-huh. I say, Jolly, come and look at this. Good gracious. You see? The hole is just big enough to take it, isn't it? But what is it, Mr. Law? It looks to me like a type of metal safe, sir. That's just what it is, Jolly, but this is a rather special type of safe. You know, I do believe we've discovered the mystery of Selby Farm. That was part five of The Toff on the Farm, a serial for radio dramatized by Roy Lomax from a novel by John Creasy, starring Terence Alexander as The Toff with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Gillian Selby was played by Heather Stoney, Monty Morn by Terence Hardiman, Superintendent Grice by Duncan Lamont, Mr. Smith by Reg Lye, and Bert Ebbett and the police sergeant by Douglas Blackwell. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson.